today. So uh, we just want to remember each and every one of them that's maybe held out today. And, uh, you know, I know it's that time. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, uh, better to be safe than sorry, as, as the saying goes. And, uh, uh, you know, we kind of got to keep the sickness uh, uh, where we can be smart about it. But, you know, I know the Lord can reach out and touch those and their hearts in the right place. Uh, uh, you know, that's all that really matters, I, I do believe. I, I believe you ought to come to the house of the Lord if you're an able-bodied Christian. Uh, uh, you know, what give you time to Him. Uh, you know, and uh, I believe that's our duty is uh, to assemble ourselves together. But, uh, you know, uh, if, we, if we're not able to, uh, the, the biggest part is, and it don't matter if you're here or if you're not here, is making sure your heart's in the right place. And uh, if you got your heart in the right place, I believe God will deal with you. So uh, we pray special blessings on those that ain't able to make it out there uh, today with us. And uh, uh, most of all, I want to remember those that didn't have the desire this morning. Uh, I pray that the Lord maybe uh, uh, convict them, uh, put them in the place where they need to be, where they realize, and they, they can turn to Him uh, before it's everlastingly too late. So, uh, uh, you know, what well, we're thankful to be here. We're thankful you're here. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, we just ask you to be much in prayer for us. We do nothing of ourselves. And only what the Lord would have us do. Uh, has anybody got a special or anything they'd like to do this morning? Come on up here if you got one. Say it's good to be here, and uh, we ask you to just be much in prayer for us. And uh, I got a little thought laid on our heart, and we'll do our best to get it out. But uh, probably not going to be real long this morning. And uh, uh, but you know, uh, we, we've kind of got a, uh, I guess, got to thinking about this time of year. And uh, you know, when the Lord laid a thought on our heart, and we stumbled across a devotion, we like to read devotions a lot. And uh, you know, it kind of got to dealing with us. And uh, and I, I know at this time of year, uh, we, we focus on Christmas about families getting together and. Uh, and uh, you know things like that, and uh, you know gift giving is something that it takes place this time of year. When I think about Christmas, I, I you know that that's something that comes. But uh, you know it's not not just the presents that we buy and uh, go to the store. I think that's overtaking a lot of it, and that's why we've got to continually remind everybody what the reason for the season is. And uh, you know the Bible tells us about the greatest gift ever given. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we want to talk to you about. And, uh, you know, this is going to kind of be a little long uh, thing. Uh, uh, you know, the Lord dealt with us on this, and we're going to uh, kind of give it the way that we uh, uh, received it from Him. And uh, uh, But, you know, uh, I know that Jesus Christ, uh, as a, who uh, the birth of, uh, of our Savior, is what we kind of uh, celebrate this time of year. And, uh, you know, what? it's not about all the, the presents and uh, uh, Santa Claus and things like that, but... Uh, you know, the Bible, uh, as I begin to uh, get in a little deeper into this uh, and, and we and begin to study it out, uh, you know, it lays out what, what a gift is supposed to be, what it originally was meant to be. God gave the first gift. And, uh, uh, you know, so I, as I was uh, beginning to think about this, uh, you know, my favorite time uh, or my favorite kind of gifts that I that to give, uh, you know, what I, I like to get my kids, uh, uh, they like things, and we've all had that uh, that fun time with them whenever they, they want certain toys or things like that. And, uh, you know, that's good and everything. And I, I like to get my, my family and loved ones uh, uh, certain things. But the, my favorite kind of gift to get somebody, uh, you know, what, what I have most fun with is something that really means it to it, uh, means something to them. Uh, you know, it, 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 like, it sticks with them. It, it makes them think about it. Maybe it ponders in their heart of uh, uh, why I gave it to them. And, uh, you know, that's the best kind of gift. And you, I think we can all agree on that. 
And uh, you know, I, I believe that whenever I, I begin to read the scriptures this morning, it kind of remind me, and uh, uh, you know what, uh, it played with my heart a little bit. Uh, you know, I believe God had that very thing in mind when He gave us Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, you know what, we knew that He knew that we needed a Savior uh, because He is a righteous God. Uh, he loved man enough, and because of what man was and uh, uh, what He had in His life, they needed a Savior. So we needed a Savior. Uh, so, you know, this morning, uh, as I begin to think about the gift uh, that makes people think, uh, a gift that means something to somebody, a gift that somebody can hold on to, uh, you know, this time of year is hard for a lot of people. Uh, you know, what we've had hard times. Uh, you know what, uh, maybe, maybe we've lost a loved one over the past year or things like that. Maybe, uh, you know, this time of year reminds us of that. You know, I'm sitting here thinking about all these things, and uh, uh, you know what, but the best thing about it is to know that I have something I can hold on to that can get me through hard times. So, you know, as I was thinking about the gift that God gave me uh, in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, I believe it's a sevenfold gift. And, uh, uh, you know, and that's kind of what the Lord laid on our heart. That's why we're going to share it to you this morning. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to continue it on out as far as the Lord leads us to. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, as I begin to think about it a little bit, and, uh, uh, you know, what, how, how many times uh, uh, that I see the number seven, I believe that seven is God's number. I believe it's the number of uh, perfection. Uh, uh, he finishes things out, and then whenever he's done with them, uh, uh, they're all the way done. They're perfect. So, you know, this morning, uh, uh, our thought maybe is based upon uh, what Jesus says for us first and foremost, and I believe that he's a Savior. You know what? I knew that I was lost and undone. I knew that I was out my trespasses and sins. I, I knew that I needed something in my life. I didn't know what it was. At the time, I grew up in church, and uh, uh, you know what? I heard the word that was preached, and uh, uh, you know what? I was kind of like, well, I guess as the word says, I was lost. Uh, you know what? I had no, I had no answer for anything. But you know what? By hearing the word, and a certain time that the word came to me, it kind of clicked to me, and just like it had for you, if you've been born again, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, whenever you hear a certain word, a certain scripture, it might be a certain uh, testimony that might be given. Uh, you know that whenever Jesus hits you in that kind of way, uh, uh, that He is the answer. That He is the reason for the season, but He is the answer that God gave uh, to a man that be lost in his sin. So you know what, therefore, are saved. So over in uh, Luke, the second chapter, uh, the tenth verse is what we're going to read. Very familiar scripture, not giving anything new. But it's right here, we know the birth of Jesus Christ. It says in Luke, the uh, second chapter, tenth verse, and eleventh verse, it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You know, this morning as I was beginning to think about that right there, and uh, you know, as he began to speak to, uh, at this time, out in the country, the shepherds, they were keeping the field, and uh, uh, you know what, they, they, all, uh, they were just going about their business, everyday life. You know what, they were lost. Uh, you know, just like everybody else was in the world at the time. Just like I was. And you know, as they began to uh, come, and I, you know, the very first thing that he began to let them know was that they needed to fear not. It was a great almighty thing that was happening. You know, I, I was uh, I began to dwell on this for a little bit. And, uh, you know, getting back to the gift-given part of it. And uh, uh, thinking about how how many times I remember waking up on Christmas morning. Uh, um, it seems to be like my favorite time of the year. You know, I, I think why it's a lot of people's favorite time of the year is a lot like coming to church. You know, when you come in the house of God and you're, you give yourself the time, if you're in the right place, if you got your heart and your mind right, when you come in the house of God, you can leave everything else out. You can, you can just uh, block the world out. That's the way it's supposed to be anyway. We leave the world outside. Uh, you know what? We, we, we clear everything out. We give time to meditate upon the Lord for a little while. Well, the Christmas morning is kind of like that for me. Uh, you know, we've got the work week and uh, our jobs all year long that are, that are taking us down hard and uh, uh, the troubles and cares of life. But it seems like that one morning we can set all things aside and focus on maybe our family. Uh, you know what, if you're like uh, me, and I'm sure you are, uh, uh, you, you reflect back on the birth of Jesus and uh, what He is to you. So you know what, He is a great gift that was given as a Savior uh, was born that night. Uh, you know what, He was meant to be a Savior. He was meant to be uh, the one that would uh, uh, take on a sin for the whole world, uh, that would save us from a debt load we could not pay. You know, because of our sin, because of our trespasses against God, uh, uh, Him being a righteous God, uh, He pronounced judgment on it already, but though He is a long-suffering God, uh, you know what, this time we know uh, uh, that they were uh, they were uh, given offering, they were uh, giving it up, they rolled the sins over. Uh, you know what, not to be done away with, but they were rolling them over because that's what God commanded. 
But there was a Savior that was needed, and now here is where Jesus begins to come in, and the greatest gift ever given to the world. And now, so the angel says to him, he says, uh, that I bring unto you good tidings of great joy. Uh, you know, I was asking myself this question this morning is, why was it so good? What was the joy that it was bringing? You know, I'm telling you, uh, I, I probably couldn't have answered this to you until I got saved. I don't believe any man could truly give you uh, what uh, in word form or, or in any way uh, uh, this morning uh, uh, what happened that night. I, You know, I do my best to try to explain it. I got a testimony just like anybody else has been saved. I, I know what happened to me. I know the way I felt. Uh, I try to describe it in words, but uh, you know what? When I hear that great joy that it's talking about right there, I, I know these men right here did not understand what he was saying to them. But you know what? Uh, I, I, as I uh, go, roll back to what he said, he said, Fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. You know, I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I'm glad to know this morning, and I, I made the statement here a couple of weeks ago, and I'm glad, I'm glad to know that I can't exaggerate my God. You know what? No matter how good you talk about God, it's always true. The better you talk about God, and the more it's there. You can't tell us a tall tale about what God can do. So, you know, I will tell you, as I was thinking about right here, this angel coming down and talking to him and talking about a Savior that would be born. And sometimes, uh, uh, you know, just like I know it, just in this world that we're living in right now, how evil it is, is that some people don't even know that there's a Savior that died for them. Some people don't even realize what was given that day. And you know what? And I'm going to tell you, uh, Christmas time is a beautiful time, uh, uh, but it's what come 33 years later uh, when he gave his life on that cross uh, uh, that he died for a lost and dying world that we all uh, make it known to them. And I, I you know, this morning as I begin to uh, look into this right here, the good tidings that was given, the good news that was preached that day is the same good news we still preach. Uh, uh, you know what? This was before the life of Christ. It's before the death of Christ. Uh, uh, but it was what God's plan was is that we still uh, preach today. God had a plan for the very foundation of the world. So you know what? This gift that was given right here was a Savior that the world needed. You know what? There are certain things, like I said earlier, talking about presents. Uh, uh, you know what? There are people who want a lot of things. You know what? We've turned this season into something that it's not. Uh, you know what? You get to about talking about want, want, want. But you know what? There are needs. And you know what? I realized this morning, and I, and I realized that night when I was a seven-year-old boy, I had a need in my life that needed to be filled. It could only be filled by the Savior that was given uh, is Jesus Christ. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, I believe the angel made it very clear. He didn't talk about, uh, about any old uh, person. Uh, he said uh, it is the Christ. So, you know, a Savior was given. Over in Galatians, the fifth chapter, Makes it very clear what the mission was that Jesus came. Why? Why the gift was given of a Savior to, to the lost and dying world. And now, uh, you know what? The first uh, indication is that we're lost. Uh, uh, we're in sin. But in verse uh, chapter five, verse one tells us that why Jesus was sin. He said, "Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage." So, uh, and, you know, implying right there that we were once bound down by the sin of the world. So you know what, I'm going to tell you, as I know what kind of God he is, uh, you know, from the very beginning, we go back to Abraham, and uh, he wanted to be a provider. You know what, when he created man, he provided man with all that he ever needed. Uh, you know, as Adam had that garden, he had everything that he was ever going to desire as a man. But because of sin, uh, God had to take it away. Because of sin, God would not partake with it. But you know what? When Abraham came about, I, I think about this, that whenever he went up on that mountain, and uh, uh, you know what took his son Isaac, going to give him up as a sacrifice uh, uh, to God. But uh, uh, you know what? Uh, being a man of faith, doing exactly what God had him do, because obedience is demanded by God. Uh, uh, God gave him a, a sacrifice right there. There was something that was put in place uh, uh, to take the place of that uh, boy's life that day. Uh, I believe to re re represent uh, a Savior that will be given later on. But uh, you know, I'm going to tell you right here, uh, uh, whenever you see it, it says to stand, there for, uh, uh, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. I think of that. You know what? Uh, something like you talk about a gift that's going to stay with you uh, uh, that you can hold on to. You know what, no matter what troubles and trials come about in life, no matter what I may face, I can always look back and see that I was in a worse off shape. You know what, I might not have been physically uh, 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 in a worse shape then. I might not have been uh, uh, financially in a worse shape then. You know what, uh, and you know, going through these times right now, so many different things are affecting different people in 
ways that they've never seen before. But you know what? In all of those things, I was still worse off whenever I did not have Him as my Lord and Savior. So it's a gift that stuck with me. And I, you know what I'm thinking right now as we're going through this time? If I can be anything to anybody right now is to share a scripture to realize that Jesus has come to set us free. He's come to get us away from that bondage of sin. To take us out of the things of the world. You know what? I know that that night, uh, and I'm uh, Robert read this morning over in uh, the second chapter of the book of Ephesians right there. Some of my favorite scripture too. Because it allows me to know that I was dead in my trespasses and sins. Uh, you know, it's because of things I've done. It was my fault uh, that I partook in things of the world. But though God was able to look beyond my fault, it was by faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's by grace you're saved through faith in Him. So you know, not anything that I've done that I can boast about, but it's God's hand, uh, craftsmanship uh, uh, that has got us to the point that we're in. So therefore, know that it is craftsmanship, knowing that it's able uh, to withstand. Uh, he has set us free from the bondage of sin, uh, uh, that we not be entangled anymore. Now we have liberty. You know what? I, I, I cannot think of anything in it. as an American. We ought to look at this and realize it's the greatest thing that we got. You know what, I, I'm going to tell you, uh, you look out across the world, why I'm, uh, even though that I believe that America has gotten far away from God, I believe that we've uh, uh, turned our backs on Him, and uh, uh, you know what, the Bible surely tells us what will happen to a nation that turns their back on God, it will be turned into hell, but I, I, you know what, we have been given something by God, and that is liberty to live in this country that we live in right now, but most of all, regardless of what's on the outside, regardless of whatever country I would be in, the fact that He's given me liberty from the bondage of sin to carry me and it holds to me and then you know what it's still the greatest gift I've ever received you know what I'm going to tell you I, I look out today and we see people uh, you know and, I, and it breaks our heart uh, really to look at them because you know sometimes you want to get aggravated at them I got friends and family that are in that, in that condition this morning and uh, all we can do is pray for them we know and they preach the good news the good times that they ain't even talked about but you know what, from time to time you just look and you, you have pity on their life because, you know, it seems like everything's crashing down up on them and they don't know what to do about it. They don't know what the next step is. They don't know how to take care of things. You know what, so I'm sitting here thinking we're, we're in a gift-giving season right now. The greatest gift that we can give them is the Word of God and what it says, what it holds. It tells us about a liberty, a liberation from the bondage of sin. We know as Christian people, because we, we're in the same state, we partook in the same way. We know what the answer is. We know what the reason for this season is, why God gave it, why, why He sent a Savior, why we needed a Savior. So therefore, the greatest thing that we can begin to bestow upon people, to give them a gift that's going to mean something to them, is to give them a gift that is the good news of Jesus Christ. So you know what? It's because of that I have liberty to stand and, and preach that. I can preach the gospel today because it means something to me. I have it within me. I accept it in myself. But you know what? It's kind of hard to preach something that you don't have. You know what? We're in a world right now, uh, uh, you know what? There's a lot of people that uh, uh, claim to be uh, uh, Christians. They claim to, they go to the house of God all the time but don't even know what it is to have Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. You know what? I'm going to tell you, it takes a relationship. We know that. We know the Bible talks about, about, about a personal uh, circumstance that needs to happen in every man's life. It's more than just uh, uh, saying it out loud. It's more than just uh, uh, going down and being baptized in water. But uh, it is to be fully submerged in the love and care that, that God has for us is why He gave us Jesus. So to accept the gift, uh, to freely take it, just as it was given. So you know, as I, I begin to see right here, though, is that we begin to get into a situation is to where a lot of people in this in this uh, sense right here that uh, uh, you know now we have liberty. What have we done to to uh, deserve liberty? What have we done to deserve a, such a savior to take this on? Because you know I, I know that maybe you have asked yourself the same question, just like I. Uh, who am I? Uh, you know how, how am I worthy of this? You know when we look back and we see the things, we know what happened. But uh, you know what? And I know that right now by thinking about that, I know at this time of year. Uh, uh, you know, and, uh, I, I, and this is kind of funny, but I think back to mom and daddy uh, uh, so many times. Uh, you know what? I know that I wasn't a good boy all year long. I know that I know that old Santa Claus, he, I, I probably was on that naughty list, but uh, you know what? It seems like it always turned around to where, hey, uh, you know what? I, I still got something for Christmas. You know what? I was thinking about that this morning, and uh, you know what? That, that's good and all, but uh, looking back in my life and the things that I've done, the things that I've trespassed against God, how, how am I deserving? Of what he's given me. 
You know what that Paul, he said it best, and I want to read it to you this morning uh, over in 1 Timothy, 1st chapter, 15th verse. He said, this is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, who I am chief. You know what I'm going to tell you this morning? Uh, uh, you need not uh, uh, miss the point right here of what God, why God gave the gift. God, uh, you know what, he, he had a, a personal uh, reason why he sent his only begotten son and died on that cross for you and I. He had a personal reason why he gave the gift of the world in his son Jesus. Uh, is it right here is to say, it makes it very clear, is to save sinners. Paul says, do I am chief? I don't believe there's a Christian life that's truly in the right place that doesn't believe they were the worst one off in the world. And you know what, if you don't have that belief about you this morning to think, you know what, if, if, if the Lord can do that for me, He can do it for anybody. You know what, I encourage you to find an altar somewhere. Because we've got to work it out and know exactly what God, you can't over-exaggerate God. You know what, he, He's able to do all things. And if I believe today that all the things in my life, that the things that I've done, and I know what, what I've done. I have a reminder of that. I, I believe I, I, I don't have the ability to forget those things. It brings shame to me sometimes. But knowing that I've been saved can wipe all that away. You know what? Because the Lord came to save sinners. He came to seek out that, those that are lost. But to realize you're lost means uh, 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 figuring it out right here. And I believe it comes by hearing the word of God. So, you know what? I mean, if I can tell anybody anything this morning, is it don't matter how severe the condition is, that Jesus was still the gift given to come to no matter how bad, how worse off you were. You might have done a lot more than I ever did. But you know what? He was a perfect gift given that can come down to all men. And I'll leave any out. You know what? I've seen a lot of men throughout the years. That I, you know what? You look at them. Hey, you, you see them. They're, they're, they're a, tough nail, a tough nut to crack. Uh, you know what? A lot of times you, you think hey, that, that they're not going to do this or they're not going to do that. We need not prejudge people like that. But uh, that's how we do sometimes. But you know what? God can strike down men like that. He can crack those uh, those tough nuts, and uh, uh, you know what? He can put them down on their knees, and uh, and we're on there on their knees. Uh, they become vulnerable, and uh, you know what? I believe whenever man comes down to humble like state of a broken heart and contract spirit, he's able to save because Jesus was sent to save sinners. You know what? So just like Paul, when Paul persecuted the church, I believe he even killed people uh, for for being Christians, for being the ones that love the Lord. You know what? If God can save a man like that. If he could take somebody and turn them around right more than half the New Testament, you know what, start all these churches and set them up and reprove people, you know what, reproof only comes by one way, and being right. The Bible says, judge not that you be not judged, but uh, you know what, cast them over out of your own eye before you cast it out of your brother. So you know what, whenever you reprove, it means that you have to be right with God. You have to have everything in tune with you. You were proved by the Word of God. And when you give the Word of God out of power, it does those things. And I believe Paul done those things. And it only come by him humbling himself down, knowing that he was among the chief of the sinners. So, you know, I'm going to turn over to Matthew, the 18th chapter. And after this, I'm going to close. But it reminds us of a story right here. You know, when I, 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 I know it's been a little while since I've read this right here, but as I was going over it, I, you know what, it reminded me of how much has been looked away. How, how much God was able uh, to remember no more. You know what? I, I believe that the ultimate uh, uh, gift of a Savior that was given right here, Jesus came down, we know, to forgive the sin. To get rid of it. You know what? Not, not to make it okay. Not, not to justify it. But to do away with it. So we're given a debt loan that I could not pay. It says right here, therefore, in the 23rd verse of the 18th chapter, it says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one brought, was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. For, but for as much as he had, had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down, and worship him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Then he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, 
till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he was had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, that because thou desirest me. Shouldest now not thou also have had compassion on my fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. You know, this morning I was, I was thinking, we've been given a gift. A Savior was born that night. The angel told it was to come to all the world. Uh, you know, to every man that would receive him. We know the Bible tells us uh, that, he, that he gave his life on that cross. Whosoever would come, they could be saved. You know, and tonight to know that I, as, I, as I stand up here and I think about this time of year, the gift given, the greatest gift ever given was right here. God gave it, gave it freely. You and I, we accepted it didn't cost us anything. A debt was so high, but yet we had to pay nothing for it to be forgiven of it. You know what? I'm thinking right here, this, this uh, a certain ruler right here, they stood and he had his servant. He gave him everything that he desired. He desired that it be forgiven for him, that he would not be sold his wife, his children. He got to keep everything he had. You know what? I like to say, hey, uh, whenever it gets down to a point where you're desperate enough, and I think that's what it takes a man to get to rock bottom point, to realize and look up and see that he has nothing. You know what? All those things, they, they meant something to him, but at that point in time, his very life was at stake. So you know what? I'm sitting here thinking, as that king forgave him the gift that's given to us today, knowing that we've been forgiven all that debt, the greatest gift that's ever been given, yet this time of year, we put so little thought into thinking about everybody else that we can give, what we can give back to the world. You know what I'm going to tell you? I, 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 I'm not, not putting anybody down. Uh, you know what? I'm going to speak to myself more than anything. But you know what? I know that always there's more that I can do to grow, more I can do to get closer to the Lord, more I can do for my Lord. But at this time of year, when we think about giving gifts, and I, you know, I, I don't know about you, but here in the last couple of years, uh, you know what, as, as family, we've gotten older, and uh, you know what, it's not so much about giving gifts anymore for us. You know, as we get together, a lot of times we don't even give gifts. It's just about more about being with people. You know, and, I, and as I was thinking about this, this, this year coming up and everything, and uh, you know what, hard times fell on a lot of people. And uh, you know what, and so it's getting less and less about that, but we still try to get together. And uh, you know, I was thinking about the greatest thing that I could ever give to anybody, something that can get them through the holidays, something that, that can uh, get them throughout life would be to tell them about Jesus Christ. Not only tell them about it, but to live in front of them. So you know what? Uh, I, I know this time of year, or, the, or this year, it seems like it's hard, uh, more hard to get together. Uh, you know what? We're, we're separated out a lot more than we ever were. And you know what? It, it, make, it makes it a little difficult to be face to face and things like that. But I still think that if we do our best to make sure that, that we, we show the world what Jesus was. You know, I wasn't in that field that night with them shepherds. I didn't see what they saw. All I, all I can do is read what Luke chapter 2 tells me that they seen that night, what was said to them. And you know what? But I, I, sometimes I feel like, though, in spirit I was there. Sometimes I feel like just because that word right there can speak in the power that it does, uh, that I'm still seeing the same thing. And you know, as I, as I begin to believe that, I believe that within my heart today. You know what? That, that gift that was given to Jesus, they talk about good tidings, great joy that was to be given. You know what? The best thing that I can do is be able to live my life in front of somebody. You know what? Don't you don't know when they're watching you. You don't know whenever they they might be given a little bit of time to to to, to uh, maybe press upon the, how they want, they're looking for a way. They're lost. They're undone. They're dying, lost, dying work. But you know what? I, I'm sitting here and, I, and I'm gonna wrap up with this, brother Keith. You come on with a song. But you know, I, I wrote down right here. What it meant to me is because if I have the greatest gift ever given to me in the world, the greatest gift that was ever given in the time of Christmas, if I have it within me and I don't tell somebody about it, and I don't show them about it, I'm neglecting the very purpose that God sent His only begotten Son and died on that cross. I'm neglecting the very purpose that it was to save a lost and dying world, the whole world, not just me, not just us, but everybody else that will be out there to listen. And you know what? The Bible gives us a reminder of there's a consequence if they're disobedience to God. So this morning, let's be obedient unto Him. Let's know that the greatest gift given was a Savior.
that was born unto us. So let, as we go throughout the holiday season, hey, let's remember what we've got. We've got salvation through a Savior who's able to save all. Turn to one. about take another route in the house of the Lord. Dear friend, right now, reject the Savior no more. Just turn your steps about, take another route to the house of the Lord. I sing, I pray, I lean upon His true word. I'd sing and testify.